their function and their functioning. So, as Adam named the lion, he then brought the lion to a place even to a functioning that the lion will have to eat fresh. My daddy will say flesh, fresh. This grammar, if, you, if your tongue is not good, you can't pronounce it. Flesh, fresh. And so he named the bird and said, you will fly. And so it was. So you realize that after all these things, then the animal, the creatures, and all other things that God had created, they came under the rulership and under the subjection and absolute obedience of Adam, which is man. Understand and agree with me that the word Adam there is not just a name, but the word Adam there is, talk, talk, is, is speaking about humanity. And so, God created a very beautiful place, a fertile place, and placed man in it and said, now take charge. It was a fertile place. Now, even when man sinned, we heard God from Genesis chapter 3, that God was talking about the labor that man had to go through, the curse of the ground, and that Thorns and testers shall the earth bring forth until you labor to eat. And this is where the twist and the turn came in. A lot of us still see the pictures of the days of the thorns and the testers. A lot of people in our days now still consider themselves living in the manner and in the pattern of according to the systems of the tones and the thistles. I believe that even it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes and proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so if you will live by the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, then you should also live on the word that God not only present man a land that is only full of tongues and testers. We only heard God saying that angels should guard the gate of the Garden of Eden with sword of flaming fire, but we never heard God accentuating the fact that man can never and ever get back onto the place of the garden. I'm not talking about the place of the garden in physical realm, but I'm talking about the place of the garden in living the overcomer's life. In the place of the garden, man was ruling and man was in charge. In the place of the garden, man was having all other things under his rulership and under his dominion. In the place of the garden, man was seeing beautiful fruitfulness and enjoying a great multiplicity of all other things that had been laid under him. But man is still living with the mindset, with the preconceived, with the pre-engineered mindset not coming out of the imprisonment of the fact that thorns and thistles shall the earth bring forth out of the ground unto you. Man is still living with that. You will agree with me that even in the book of Numbers, when God brought forth the serpent to bite the people when they started murmuring against God, God also gave them an opportunity, an escape route God, I have learned to know him, that he is a God who knows how to turn that justice with mercy. That even when he turns back to say that I will punish my people with the tongues and thistles that will bring forth upon them, yet he will say that, oh, I will take you to the place. I will take you to the very end because I know that that I have of you. They are the thought of peace, but not of evil. To take you to that expected end. What is that expected end? That expected end is for him to now say that now 
all things shall work together for the good of them that love God. If we are able to get to the place that we will love God, then we will love his word. If we get to the place that we love God, then we love his word. Then we get to the point when we will feed our life with his word. I want to pray with you this evening and the first prophetic word that I'm giving you tonight is this, that you will not feed on anything by the flesh, but you will live to feed your spirit with the word of God. Because in the garden days, they were living on the fertile ground. Man was living on the fertile soil. Man was living on a very beautiful place. But it came to a point that when man came out of the garden days, then man saw himself as a liability, even though God has said, I have given you the vast land all around you. And even the four rivers that I caused to water the land, I have never seen a river that never flows and have branches and have banks. A river will flow and will not start at a place. And so if God brought forth four rivers, one of it was called Pison, to water the land of the garden, then I believe also that the water did not start within the confinement of the gardens of Eden. But I believe also that one of the waters, or maybe two of them at least, was able to transcend the corridors and the borders of the gardens and they were able to continue their journey moving on the land that Adam was sent for or Adam was driven onto. Why Adam are you now living as a liability on the land that there is a water coming and having its source from the place of fertility. And once it has its source in the place of fertility, then I see this same river from the source transcending on the same land that you are working on. Why is man now living with the mindset as a liability on the fertile places? But I I want to charge somebody tonight that was so rubber that is charging your spirit, was so rubber that has imprisoned your mindset. There are a lot of people we have heard that is saying, this year we are living the overcomer's life. This month, we are living the overcomer's life. After blessing our spirit with the hearing of the word of God, we go to our pillows and on our bed cheering because we see the threatenings of the coming morning. We see the threatenings of the coming days with the burdens of old and they resurfaces and they reimagine themselves. But tonight, I came with an oil of my father to charge somebody that even though you may see yourself as a liability on the fertile grounds, but God is a God who has also said, all lands and all other things in the earth, they are in my hands, and I can bless you with it without taking back, and so God is saying to somebody tonight that I have placed you on a place, not only is it going to be fertile, but it is also going to be fruitful, somebody shout fruitful. And A lot of people in business, a lot of people even in the area of relationship, a young man will see a young lady will work, will have all the other things available, present, will have all the hopes high, but all of a sudden, one of the two people or one of the parties will rise up all of a sudden and will say, I don't want to continue this journey anymore. Why is it so? I have heard this being said. I've heard this being told about you. A lot of people around within the neighborhood are saying this. Yet this person might be the rape that God has placed back into the place that it was taken out. But because of the mindset of liabilities. A blessing has been presented unto you. A fertile land has been presented unto you. There are a lot of people with money stuck in the bank, but for them to believe in one single idea, they are still living with the mindset of liabilities and monies are stuck in the bank, not working and bringing them interest. Oh, I see such people as the Bible will describe them in the book of Matthew chapter number 20. 
five. The Bible will say from the verse number 19 down, when the man in the parable of the talent, the man went and after time he came back and he asked them to bring account. One that received the five said, I saw myself not anymore because I knew that when my master you were living, because of the charge you placed on me, I saw myself by reason of the talent that you gave to me. It wasn't only a gift you gave, but it was also an oil for attraction. There are a lot of us, we hear that the preaching, we soak ourselves in the word, but we are not able to open our spirit for the workings of the word. But I pray tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, I call for for the oil of my father to come back, to come and hit somebody knocking into your spirit. There are a lot of us, we cause our flesh to receive goose pimples after the word is preached, but we never allow our spirit to receive goose pimples as a response to the word that is able to break because the Bible has said in the book of Jeremiah, that is my word, not as hammer that breaks. Tonight, the word of God is going to work as a hammer that will break every limitation. And so the one that received the five talents said, oh, by the gift that you gave, when I touched the gift that you handed to me, a certain spirit entered into me. I love it when Ezekiel will say, in Ezekiel chapter number two, he said from the verse number one, he said, and the spirit entered into me. And the chapter number three, he says, and when the spirit entered into me, he took me, the chapter, chapter three, the verse number one, he took me back on my feet. There are young men and young maidens within the confinement of the church. They hear the word of God, but we never allow our spirit to be moved by the word In the workings of the word of God, but you have come to a place with the word and prayer service that God is going to move somebody by his word. God is going to move somebody out of the place of liability. And you are going to work with the spirit of our father. You are going to work with the element of the atmospheric heavens that whatsoever that has been handed over to you, it will not seem in your mind's eye as something mania. It will not seem in your mind's eye as something little, but you shall even present yourself as the the one that received the two talents. Just, just lift up your voice and pray yeah. while, yeah. while he reconnects. Can you lift up your voice and pray while he reconnects? Can we please unmute our mics and pray while he reconnects? And so, thank you, Jesus. 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 And he presented himself and said, Master, thou good master, look, the gift that you presented to me, though it was true, but I've been able to work in the same manner by the Period that you poured upon me, I've been able to have interest on it. I've been able to see fruitfulness working on it. And here are the gift that you gave to me. The master said to him, thou good and faithful servant, you have been faithful with little. Come and share in your master's joy and be Lord over mighty. But there are a lot of people, a certain group of people, a certain generation, a certain people, even in our churches now, they are the people belonging. Up. I know that you are a man, even in your wickedness, you couldn't give me any great gift. 
You couldn't give me any beautiful gift than this one talent. And so when I looked at it, I saw that it can't do anything. Even if I go to work with it, it will not yield anything. It will rather be a waste of energy, waste of strength. And so I have to hand it to a place that I will destroy it. And then when you come, I will hand it over back to you. Make there are a lot of us in the church of God. All that we know to do is to say, for us even to preach the word of God, to win one soul, we say, we sit and we hear the word of God being preached. A lot of us have many books from many authors stuck in our personal libraries, but we are not able to impact even our own children with the wisdom of the book that we have studied, but I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, I see a new genealogy coming back. I see a new generation rising up. These are the generations of fire. These are the generations of the word of God rising up as an army in the name of Jesus Christ that are saying that we are the people believing in the giftings and in the talents of God. And not only are we believing in that, but we believe in multiplicities. We believe in the law of increase and we believe in the law of fruitfulness. And so by by this law and by this rule, we are presenting giftings, we are presenting interest, we are presenting fruitfulness that the church of God will not die. The master looked at the latter one and said, oh, thou wicked servant, with the mindset of liabilities, with the mindset of I cannot do, with the mindset of I cannot go, with the mindset of I, I don't fit to be here. Oh, look at the people. When I look at the at the sons of the prophet in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 6, when I read this script, this very scripture, I always always cannot understand myself. These are the people also that Jesus Christ looked at them in the book of Luke, and he saw them in the book of 2 Kings chapter number 6, if you can give me that scripture. 2 Kings chapter number 6, the verse number 1. He said, and the sons of prophets said unto Elisha, behold now, blow with me, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight, meaning it's too small for us. They have reasoned that the place is too small. They need an increase, but they are not ready to work, even to go an extra mile with an increase. You will understand me with this. Don't be on the surface. We will go deeper. And he said, let us go. We pray thee unto Jordan and take thence every man a beam and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, go ye. Flow with me. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servant. And he answered, I will go. And one said, Okay, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. Verse 5. Verse 5. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in tighter, and the iron did swim. Now, this is my word. They were able to see, they were able to reason out. They had the sense to reason that we need to see an increment, even to the point that they took the initiative to go and cut beams. There are a lot of people who see themselves. There are a lot of us in church. There are a lot of us in the areas of businesses. There are a lot of us in the areas of ministry. There are a lot of us in the areas of, of relationships. We see ourselves that we need to progress. As a matter of fact, we are ready to take the bold step to progress, but we have not conditioned our mindset that 
we will come face to face with barriers and barricades. And as we are yearning for an increase, so must we dare ourselves that when we hit the blockade, we will not allow the blockade to push us back, but by the, the rule of fertility, but by the rule of daring to increase, but by the rule of daring to rule, I am saying a word, the rule of daring to rule, it means by the principle of charging our Ourself to live as kings and queens. We will not allow anything and anyone to come and suppress and impress upon us to have our mindset condition as servant. While this young man was filling the beam, the asset fell. Now my question is, if the axe head, it means there was a wood that was connected to the axe head. Why is it that the wood did not break because the wood by reason of the wood and an iron it means that the wood should have broken but the wood did not break but rather it was the axe head that fell off do you know what that means you will agree with me in this if you are able to study the word in Matthew chapter number 26, the, the last verse he says, and I will smite the shepherd and the flocks will be dispersed. And so the enemy knows very well if he comes to CPF and is able to attack Kobe Asante, there is a headman who is called Apostle Joshua Emisa, who is carrying the head oil, who is carrying the head mantle, who is carrying the great oil to come back and and redeem Kobe Asante. He know that if I go forth to touch Aaron, Aaron will cry upon Apostle Joshua Emisa, and Joshua Emisa will rise, and with the speaking of a word, will come and deliver Aaron. But why not me attack the head itself? Because if I attack the head, it means also I am attacking the sharp edge of the rule. It means also I am attacking the cutting edge of the army. Do you know why the enemy will not attack any child but the child that the father loves so much? Do you know why the enemy will not attack any child but the daughter that the mother loves so much, the one that is well prepared from the kitchen, the one that is endowed with all the nitty gritties of how to keep the home. This is the one that the enemy was smite with a disease so much so that he will have a cause to break the heart of the mother and will break the heart of the father. This is the enemy we're talking about. And it is this same enemy operating with the mindset of liabilities. So this enemy is always looking for the opportunity that the people of God will be impoverished, that the people of God will be stuck at a point, that there will not be any part, there will not be any reason, because hear me on this, if the, if the, if the stick of the axe is the one that is broken, it means also that there can be a piece that is connected to the axe head, that it can still be usable. Somebody say usable. I pray for somebody. May God make us usable. A lot of us say this in a mess. We say, God, use me. God, use me. No, that is a wrong statement. God, make me usable. God, make me usable. Oh, God bless you. God, make me usable. So he knows that if the wood is broken, the connecting part, the remaining part connected to the asset by the daring spirit in you, you will still be able to use it. And so he will rather attack the axe head itself. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. If you are talking about this, then you agree with me. Steady businesses that are legitimate, how they struggle, steady entities, steady churches that are of a genuine grounds with Jesus Christ, steady how they struggle because the enemy knows that they are a great force to reckon with if they are allowed to operate in their fullness capacity to impact communities, to impact generations, to impact nations and kindred. And so I see a man, a man 
like Joseph, who was given the coat of many colors. It means also that he was given the mindset to break forth. He was given the mindset of fruitfulness, the coat of many colors. I see one of the colors being one of the things that is to say you are fruitful. I see one of the colors that is to say you will multiply. I see one of the colors that is saying you will take charge. I see one of the colors that is saying you will rule. I see one of the colors that is saying to somebody in CPF, saying that you will have multiplicities. I see one of the colors that is saying to someone who is barren, saying that you will bear many fruits. I pray for somebody as I declare to any barren womb tonight by the rule of fruitfulness that may every womb that is refusing to be fruitful receive a seed that is viable in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The coat of many colors that was given, one of the colors was saying, oh my son, you shall have dominion, you shall take charge. And I see another color also saying, now you shall replenish. The word replenish also means that when all men are cast down, when there is dryness in the atmosphere, when there is dryness in the house, when there is nothing in the, in the family, when there is nothing in the kitchen, oh, I see one that is coming from the backside of the wilderness, coming to say, Father, look at the oil that you impacted upon me. I've been able to kill and prepare venison. And so here I am able to feed the entire house. We are not living in dryness. I have a presentation to make. I see the word of God saying, a body had thou prepared for me. I see God preparing a body in the name of sleep. PF. I see God preparing a generation in the name of word and prayer service. And I see God saying, the mindset of liability, I've come to prepare a new body because I've given to you a new coat. And one of it is for you to now say that I have dominion to take charge. And so when the axe it fell. I was expecting this young man to rise up to himself and will say, even in this river Jordan, I know that there can be baptism that can go on. Maybe my father had not baptized me yet, but I see an opportunity presenting itself. I see a time that has come for me to now dip my head, for me to now immerse myself under the pool of the Jordan, because if I am able to dip my head underneath it. Maybe I may find a certain element. If I do not find even a diamond, I may find a precious stone. Maybe I may find honest in there. Maybe I may find molybdenum in there. Maybe I may find one of the precious element underneath it. But this young man with the mindset of liability, he saw himself that I cannot do anything. I was expecting that the young man, instead of crying out, will first begin to wade through the waters by taking the bold step, walking and stepping tapping his feet at the area where the axe head fell. Maybe he may stumble on the axe head, but this young man did not take such an initiative because he saw himself that I cannot do anything. It was an opportunity presenting himself itself. Let me talk to you a little before we pray about a man that is called Benson Idahosa. The ministry of Benson Idahosa could not be birthed out except for one Sunday. The Bible, the the history says that he closed from Sunday service after the 
after the minister had preached in the church and said, if we are carrying Jesus Christ in us, we can say to the dead, arise and they shall arise from the dead. And so he said, pastor, did you really mean the word that you said? The pastor said, yes. So he said, then I am going out to look out for a dead body. The pastor charged him to stop because he saw the Benson then as a young and fragile son who cannot dare a dead body to come back to life. Oh, the mindset of liabilities on fertile grounds. Look at how poor and how grievous it is for a minister of God to preach a, a sermon and to the point where the sermon had to be demonstrational. Then he is pulling himself back. He said, oh, my little Itahosa, it is not about time for you to dare the enemy yet. You see our area, our territory in this Benin city. You don't just bear the words of the street. Just come back here. And the young Benson said, I am going to dare the God of Jesus Christ. And he went out there seeking for a dead body. He come through the whole area and could not find one. Amazingly, he could not hear even people crying and wailing for their dead ones. And while he was returning in pain and in disappointment, the history records and say, his, he had some people and he met a car and he stopped them because he looked at them and realized that the church and the people how they have lined up. It looks like they are going to bury someone. So he stopped them with endless expectation. And when they stopped, he said, where are you going? They said, there is a young lady who is dead. I cannot reason why it is always, and in most cases, young ladies. But I believe that God has something. Thank God for our mothers. I celebrate all our mothers for the Mother's Day. And so the young person charged the people and said, bring out the dead body. And they brought the body out. I can see all the people, some of the people insulting the young and the fragile Benson. Some of the people chanting at him saying, don't waste our time. I can imagine some of the people pushing him around and saying, why have you allow this poor a young boy to make mockery of our dead. Let us be in a hurry, for we are in the haste already, and some were insulting him, but with the mindset of fruitfulness, because he saw an opportunity presenting itself, and he charged the people and said, give me some few minutes. He prayed on the dead body and called on the name of the God of resurrection, because I believe maybe on that Sunday, maybe the minister preached from Romans chapter 8, the verse number 11, when he says, if the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead abides with us, then it is that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that shall quicken our mortal bodies. And so when he saw this, he said, if there is immortality from the spirit that raised Christ from the dead that will come into me, then I know by the rule of that which he said, for the thing that we have received and has been handed over to us, so we testify unto you, we hand over to you, that you also may come and okay. testify of his goodness. And so when he went and touched the dead body, the young Benson prayed and touched the dead body, and all of a sudden, a miracle pumped out, an opportunity started gushing out. The dead arose and come and see hailing, come and see people celebrating. It appeared from the onset as a disappointment. People pushing the young Benson away. People insulting the young Benson away. There is somebody in here tonight. You have thought of starting a young business, but when you look at giant conglomerate, such as Coca-Cola, you look at the giant entities, such as KSC, and you look at yourself, it tells you that maybe when you start, you cannot be great as them. But I came to charge you as the minister who preached the word, but could not work and walk the word. But the young Benson was able to break the ranks of the church word and took the word from the pulpit and manifested the word on the street.
it. I am here to trust somebody that no more liabilities, the mindset of liabilities, that the church of God continues to remain liable, that the church of God continues to remain impoverished. I see the rising up of an army. I see the rising up of a new generation. We are the armies of God rising up and empowered. And when the young Benson prayed and the dead arose, a church started over there. A miracle service started over there and it entered into the marketplaces. Oh, my daddy will say the marketplace evangelism. A marketplace evangelism presented itself right away because a young poor boy broke the shell of liabilities on fertile places, of liabilities on fertile grounds. And he saw himself that I have to break the status quo. Who am I talking to this evening? In your family, there seems to be wealth, but you have not tasted of it. In your family, there seems to be fruitfulness, but you have not tasted of it because there is a tag on the fruitfulness that anyone that touches the gold of the family dies in their early stage. But I came with a word for you tonight. I came with a word for you. It may be a fruitful land, but you have been remaining as a liability with it. But I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at Benson in the Hosa. In his days, a man like now the Benin was sitting at his feet. It was the days that the, the the continent Africa was blessed. It was the days that the continent Africa was being healed. I see the time that Africa will be healed in the element of God and in the things of God. I see it coming back because God is raising a new generation that will no more see themselves as liabilities on fertile places. But if you have heard the word of God being preached ever before by our father, Apostle Joshua Enisa, then you have received the fertility of the word of God. No more are you remaining as a liability in the name of Jesus Christ. I charge somebody now, as you see a liability, as you see a limitation, begin to see beyond that limitation. Thank God for the word I preached the other day, that beyond the expectation, beyond the liability, beyond the limitation, is something for you to dare yourself with and to see the blessings of God coming out of. You are about to lift your voice and begin to talk to God. You are about to lift your voice. Come on, turn on your microphones. You are about to lift your voice and turn on to God. And say, No more limitations. Instead of seeing it as a 
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Our next prayer. We are praying. The reason some of us see the place where we are as liability Ooh. is from the fact that we are living by the rule that I did it before and it never went. Hakim, put on the screen for me, Nehum chapter one, the verse number nine. Put on the screen for me, Nehum chapter one, the verse number nine. We pray with that word quickly. There are a lot of us, we still see ourselves living as liabilities on fatal places because we are living with the mindset of I did it before and it never went. <clears throat> I can put on the screen on the screen for me. Nehum chapter one, the verse number nine. <clears throat> Nehum chapter one. God bless you, Mr. Samuel Bedin. God bless you all the way from Abedin. God bless you for joining. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Nehum chapter one. Let me let me just let me just let me just paraphrase quickly. It says. For affliction shall not happen to us the second time. For affliction shall not happen to us the second time. What have you been through that your mindset is still imprisoned by that awful experience of the past? What have you seen that has limited your mindset and has plateaued your steps to see progress in life? Yes, of course, I know you once failed. Even Jesus Christ, if I am not bold to say he once failed, 
I can at least say that he tested failure. Mama Edit, God bless you. I can at least say that Jesus Christ tested failure. You want to ask me where and how? Hakim, put on the screen for me. Nehum chapter 1, the verse number 9. Jesus Christ, he tested failure when he said, Father, let this cup run over me. Jesus Christ almost ran away. Almost ran away from a very great opportunity. It was a fertile ground set for him to go through a small pain for just a while. Then after, he shall be given a name that is greater than any other name. It was a fertile place presented, a blank check, signed, and stamped. But many of us, God bless you, Apostle B.C. Cameron, many of us are living with the mindset that I did it before. Where? Look at the woman in John chapter 4. Even that woman who encountered Jesus Christ, he said, you have married five times. And the one that I love this woman, the woman is a woman who would dare the failure. I have failed once, but I would dare myself to progress again. I have failed twice, but I would dare myself to progress again. Then he failed. He said, I have failed thrice, but I would dare myself to fail. He said, I have failed four times, but I would dare myself. The fifth time, and even the one, that means the woman has failed five times, and the sixth one was the one that Jesus met her with. It means if he had not met Jesus, the woman will continue to dare herself until she gets to the pain where she will get her own. Mama, you've tried the businesses and they seem not working. But tonight, the word that I have for you is in Nehemiah chapter one. He's saying, as long as we are on a fertile place set by our God, affliction shall not happen to us the second time. I lost my first child, but I... I'm not allowing this belly. I am not allowing this sea. Though I wake up every morning and I see the spotting, I wake up every night and I see blood spot all around me, but I dare myself to touch my womb and I pray upon this service and I say that you are not opening up until the appointed time of the nine months for a woman shall conceive for nine months and after the time is due, then she shall bring forth a son for a Zion travailed. Then she brought forth for affliction shall not happen to us the second time. We are lifting our voices and praying that in the name of Jesus that anything that I ever did and failed I am renewing my mindset away from the failure and I am pushing forward in the name of Jesus Christ. I am pushing forward in the name of Jesus Christ and I know that I am not failing again. I am pushing forward without failing again. You are lifting your voice with me in prayer and declaring that I am not failing again. I know that I failed once. I know that I fell sick once. I know that I was diagnosed of cancer once. I know that I went through the accident once, but I am not failing the second time. God, you, Dr. Stephanie, all the way from Bless you, Dr. Stephanie. I know I know that I failed once. I know that a tsunami came once, but I know that it was the last one. And we are very near the atmosphere around us. We know that there is a new and the metro. We know that there is a new and the metro department saying that there is a typhoon coming. It was worse in last year. But this time around, we are lifting up. We will not fail. We will not fail. On top of the mountain, and there was in the valley. We are lifting our hands and we are staring at God. Oh, I think so. 
Amen and amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Franklin Wanda. Franklin Wanda. Thank you, Jesus. Also, I can hear you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Hear me. My time is almost up. I'm glad we six minutes. Bless our daddy for this. Franklin Wanda. Franklin Wanda. Franklin Wanda. Thank God for your life. Amen. Franklin, Franklin Wonder. I want to pray for a person that I'm seeing a figure like a lady who is standing right behind you. I'm talking about if I say who is standing right behind you, I'm talking about a lady who comes after you from the very same womb that you came out of. Mm. Franklin, Franklin Wonder. Also, Franklin Wonder. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about because I'm seeing a figure, a lady who is standing right behind you. And the spirit of the Lord is ministering to me. A lady who comes in the same womb after you. After you. Thank you, Jesus. Wherever this person is, I want to join you and your entire family. And we pray for this person. We pray for this person. Oh, in the realms of the spirit, mm. the realm of the spirit, I saw this person in a talk with some people entering into something that seems like a partnership. It is like something that she is planning to initiate, but she wants to start it not of her own, but she wants to start it with some other people because she had conceived a very great idea. And from the standpoint where I'm seeing it, it's like she wants to start it as a very big thing already. So she's soliciting for some helping hands as like a teamwork for them to come together in agreement, like a partnership. 
Because as we speak now, I'm seeing some documentation where it's been going on in partnership. And they are planning to come up with a setup, with a, set, a setup. I'm talking about something that seems like a company. Okay. And mm. the Lord showed me that mm. we should pray for this, your sister. Because mm. one of the very key people that has a say among, thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing three people that she's speaking with, three people. And one of the very key person that she had built her hope in, the person is doubting the idea. And the person is at the verge of pulling out of the deal. The person is at the verge of pulling out of the deal. So I want to pray for this, your sister, that was so ever idea that she had conceived and tabled before people soliciting for help. May God support the idea first. Amen. And may God connect her with the heart of the people such that the people will agree together and will bless her. Amen. With all that she needs in the, the name of Jesus. In the name Amen. of Jesus, it is done. In the name of Jesus, it is done. Amen. Esther Amen. Banda. Esther Banda. Esther Banda. Esther Banda. God bless you. Esther Banda. Esther Banda. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Esther yes, Banda. Esther Banda. God bless you. This is Esther Banda. Seeing, okay. I'm seeing some people. That have gathered like a people in classroom yeah. and they have sat down like in a state of writing exam and i'm counting from the classroom where you enter yeah. from the standpoint that i'm seeing it yeah. when you enter the class when you enter the classroom the whiteboard or the chalkboard is on your left side and the rest of the class sit from your right side and on the right side i am counting from one, two, three. On the third row, then I'm counting down to the back. One, two, three, four. And I'm seeing your name written on an on, on one of the tables. Esther Banda. I'm seeing your name written on one, one of the tables. And the Spirit of the Lord is ministering to me that we should pray for you that anything that will seem as like an exam or an interview that is at hand. We pray for the success of the spirit of God to Amen. be handed over to you with ease. Amen. This one is a declaration. Be Amen. handed over to you with ease, without struggle. With ease, Amen. without struggle. This thing that I'm seeing, it could be an interview. It could be an interview. Because I'm seeing the setup as people sitting down and writing exam. So it could be an interview or it could be an academic exam. But the law said we should proclaim excellence and success upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. It, Amen. Is Amen. it is done. It Amen. is done. It is done. Amen. It is done. Amen. It is Amen. done. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Prosper. My time is up. Prosper. Also, prosper. Also. Prosper, also. Can you unmute your mic if you're hearing me? Prosper. Prosper, yes. also. Prosper. Hello, I'm here. Can you I'm unmute here. your mic? My time is up. Thank you, Jesus. Prosper. I'm here, please. I'm here, please. Okay, prosper. Okay. Yes. Okay, God bless you. Prosper. Amen. I'm seeing, I'm away from classroom. I'm in a classroom also. Is it? Okay. Okay, you're welcome. Is it yourself who is in a classroom or someone very close to you who is in a classroom like a teacher or a lecturer? Yourself or someone who is very close to you. This person could be a parent or a sibling who is in, who is in a classroom like a teacher or a lecturer. Uh, no, please. Can no, you hear please. me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. It's my line too bad. Can you hear me, please? Okay. Hello? Can you yes, hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. What do you do? What do you do? So I, work, I, work, I am an auditor with Ghana. No, your service. line is not too bad. Yes, I can hear you. 
your line is not too bad. I can hear you. What do you do? I, I work with Ghana Audit Service. Yeah, Prosper. What do you do? What do you do? I work with Ghana Audit Service. I'm an auditor. What do, you, what do you do? Nothing too bad, though. You're an auditor Hello. with Ghana Audit. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Okay. Yes. I yes. I heard you. Now, now, whatsoever that you do, there is a wisdom that is coming upon you. Not only, not only in the area of the auditing that you know yourself to do, but there is a wisdom that is coming on you to impact people because I'm seeing you running a thing like inspiring people. That is why I, I started talking about either yourself or somebody close to you because I'm seeing a figure in a classroom, okay? okay. God, is, God is lifting you to a place that there is Amen. a wisdom that is coming upon you to impact Amen. people with the know-how. With the know-how. And this wisdom, I'm talking about the entrepreneurship. Amen. The know-how of entrepreneurship and the area Amen. that God is giving to you is the area where you will talk to people who already have business. Oh, okay. Amen. People who already have businesses but yet they don't know how to uh, how to expand or grow their business. So you Amen. it is not going to be like you gather people who are elite or people who are um, um the Americans will say rookie in their field. Okay, but you will gather people who are already doing well in the field, but they don't know how to progress to the next step or to progress to the highest level. And God mm. is giving you the wisdom to reach out to these people, and you will show them, you will show them the light of bigger opportunities for them to harness in the area where you, where they are. Are you with me? I'm with you. Okay. So I want to pray with you now that the oil of this wisdom will be activated even now, will be Amen. activated. And the spirit of Amen. the Lord is ministering to me that it is going to start from this. I'm seeing a man calling you. I'm seeing a man calling you. And the number of this man ends with, thank you, Holy Spirit. It ends with 537, 537, 537. The man is in his 56th year. The man is around 56, 56 years old. The man will call you. The numbers end with 537, as I'm seeing it. And the man will call you and will want to meet you and will share ideas about how his business has stacked and wants you to help him break out mm -hmm. from that limitation. And Amen. that is where the whole thing is going to start from. After your oh. encounter with the man, then you're going to see yourself operating on a new ladder. May the will of the Lord and the word of God be blessed. God bless you. Amen. Just, just Amen. lift your voice and begin to bless God. Just bless God. Just bless God. Just bless God. Just bless God for tonight. Just thank God. God. Bless thank God. You, Jesus. We thank, you, thank, thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord. We thank you for tonight. We thank you thank for you tonight. Jesus. We thank you. We give your glory for tonight. We give God praise. We give God praise. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We are no more living. We are no more living. We are no more living as liabilities on fertile places. In the name of Jesus. Territories, we shall possess land, we shall win territories, we shall remain blessed, we shall possess our possessions in the name of We shall continue to live in the life, and we shall manifest we will manifest life in every area, in every place that we have given to us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, in the name of God. In the name of God, in the name of God. Thank you, Jesus. You reign, you wish and Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. You reign, you wish and Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh.
Thank you. So at this point, my time is up. I hand over. I hand over. I hand over Hakim. Just uh, take over. All right. The Lord just, bless just you. take over. The Lord bless you so much. Thank you, Daddy. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Speak a blessing over the life. Please lift up your voice in a short speak over his life that the Lord will bless him. The Lord will continue to increase him. The Lord will prosper him in every area of life. Can I hear somebody's prayer? Let's release a prayer yeah, over his life. Thank you for your devotion. For using him to be a blessing, that oh Lord, you enlarge the territories of your father. We pray that oh Lord, that you increase in wisdom, strength, oh God, in your grace and your mercy, oh Lord. Father Lord, bless him exceedingly in abundance, oh God. That oh Lord, whatever that he desires, oh God, Father Lord, you grant it to him, oh Jesus. We know he's blessed in your name. In your name, that oh God, he's blessed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. We are very, very grateful, Apostle, for availing to be a blessing to us. Lord, favor you in every way. Amen. All right. So, if you have any offering to release, you can go ahead. The details will be placed on the screen, and you can go ahead and send in your offering. You can go ahead and send in your offering. And I want to remind us, tomorrow morning, early morning, we are still on for the hour with the Lord from 4.30 a.m. to 5.30 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, uh, you are all invited. And I want to encourage that we don't miss it for anything. Let us not miss it for anything on to join us, even as we pray. And then bear us in prayer on the 22nd of this month. We'll be in Togo for Togo for Christ. It's going to be a very powerful invasion in Togo uh, as we begin to enter into other nations um, to present the gospel of the kingdom and the mind of God for the nation. So I encourage you to bear us up in prayer as we invade um, Togo for Christ. Christ will be glorified in the nation of Togo and his mind will be fulfilled. All right. We thank God. Shall we share in the words of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, the love, the love of, God, of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. Thousand generations, thousand generations, ever and ever. Amen. You are blessed. Have a very fruitful um, evening. See you tomorrow morning on an hour with the Lord. And Frank, may the Lord increase you. God bless all of us. Have a good night. Bye.